In case you haven't noticed by now, Kung Fu Panda is my favorite DreamWorks franchise, as the first three films can be described as none other than pure art and cinema. The first movie can be summed up as an unexpected masterpiece, and easily up there as an instant classic. Everything this movie did in 2008 still holds up gracefully by today's standards. The humor is perfectly timed, the score is peak in all of these movies, the animation and action scenes are just mesmerizing, with the best one in my eyes being Tai Lung's prison escape in the first movie, but to cap off this beautiful dumpling buffet, the writing is just spectacular as the audience gets to experience Poe's growth in overcoming imposter syndrome and developing strength through complex training and philosophy. Kung Fu Panda 2 is easily my favorite film in the franchise, as every one of the first movie's strongest aspects are cranked up from 10 to 11 here. The score, the action, the animation, the world building are all just chef's kiss. And to top that all off, the story of Poe trying to train through his pain of childhood trauma is just beautiful. This movie easily balances all those perfectly with a heavy dose of strong emotional moments that make this a top 3 DreamWorks film for me. Kung Fu Panda 3 isn't really on the same tier as the first two in my book, mostly because I feel like what the movie was going for, which was exploring more of Poe's birth home, just wasn't as fully developed as I wanted it to be. Plus, the villain is just not on the same tier as the previous two for me, but in the end, I still really love this movie. I love how it explores Poe finally reuniting with his birth father and exploring their relationship, all while Poe grows and eventually masters spiritual fighting and becoming a teacher. Plus, the emotion and action are still really strong in this one, so in the end, it's still a Kung Fu Panda movie, and this would have been a very strong conclusion to the franchise as a whole. But of course, it wasn't. Now, when DreamWorks announced Kung Fu Panda 4, I was feeling very positive about it. I mean, hey, Kung Fu Panda is a top-tier movie franchise, and a fourth entry wouldn't hurt, right? There's some stuff I need to talk about. Now, because this movie is new, I won't go into spoilers, so let me take this time to discuss all the positives. First off, the casting is still good. Jack Black, Dustin Hoffman, James Hong, and Brian Cranston still sound as great as ever, and Aquafina is actually tolerable in this movie, and Mr. Beast plays a panda pig. The action scenes are awesome, and probably the strongest aspects of this movie. This movie attempts to utilize world building well, the animation and characters are still good, I like Jen despite her shortcomings which I will get to in a little bit, there is this really funny side plot of Mr. Ping and Lee following Poe and sharing awesome chemistry, displaying their growth from when they first met in the last movie. Also, the concept of this movie sounds interesting. I always find it game-changing when characters we've come to know and love for a while now take on a brand new position that evolves them from their own lifestyle. With Poe evolving from Dragon Warrior to the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace, you would expect him to ride with that concept, right? Unfortunately, this is where I'm going to have to start getting all grumpy and critical, because this movie does not live up to its full potential. I'm sorry to say that this movie does have big problems when it comes to stuff such as storytelling, characters, and the overall pacing. When it comes to this movie's attempt at showing Poe's journey when it comes to evolving into Uguay's position, it is just painfully underdeveloped. This movie doesn't necessarily have a terrible attempt at that, but it just feels incredibly underwhelming, because that factor is rarely a explored, and when it does get a chance to shine, it feels like a joke rather than a serious moment almost every time. Now, I'm all fine with Kung Fu Panda having silly humor, but it needs to know when to take itself seriously. And by the time we do get to the plot's conclusion, it doesn't even feel halfway close to as impactful or satisfying as to when Poe grows as a character in the previous movies. Oh, and if you were expecting The Furious 5, prepare to be disappointed because they are not even on screen for 5 minutes, and when they do show up, it really does feel like a slap in the face, and I think all those who have seen the film will know what I'm talking about. And the worst part about their absence is that we don't get to see Poe's chemistry develop 
develop with them at all. Whereas in the previous movies, they were some of the most important characters to building Poe as a whole, especially Tigress, who easily has some of the strongest moments with him in all three of the previous movies. Because they might as well be absent, we unfortunately don't get to see Poe have strong chemistry with other characters. Not even Master Shifu feels present in this one. He is only really on screen towards the beginning and end of the film, and when he is, he just feels like a joke. As for this movie's new main character, Jen, I do like her arc as I do think that it is handled well, but her relationship with Poe doesn't feel like anything special compared to the rest of the cast. The last major thing I want to talk about is the villain, because this is easily the worst one in the franchise without the slightest doubt. When it comes to positives about the chameleon, the concept of her powers being able to shapeshift into other kung fu masters including the villains in the last three movies, is interesting. I also think her chemistry with other characters is handled well. Viola Davis also does a great job making her sound sinister, and of course her fight scenes are incredible and probably the strongest parts of the movie. However, the fatal flaw of this character all comes down to her motivation. I'm not going to describe what it is for the sake of spoilers, but considering characters like Mantis and Viper, who are a part of the Furious Five exist in this universe, it all just comes down as pointless and contradictory. Maybe all of these problems could have been less impactful if the movie just didn't feel too fast paced. Yes, the pacing of this movie is ultimately the factor that brings down not just the experience, but the world building as a whole. I wanted to see more of the new city this movie takes place in, but everything was just happening too quickly that there was just a lot left to be desired when it came to the world building factor. Another thing that the previous movies are so strong at, yet this one managed to screw it up. Overall, Kung Fu Panda 4 barely feels like a Kung Fu Panda movie to me. This is going to be one of the most painful scores I've ever had to give a film, but I have no choice but to give it a 6 out of 10. The least I can say is that this movie does stand as its own thing for the most part, but as a Kung Fu Panda movie, it really leaves a lot to be desired. Being that there's going to be a Kung Fu Panda 5 on the way, it is most likely that this franchise will only worsen. At this point, I'm just hoping that the odds will be in my favor, and that this will be another Shrek the Third type deal, where the film after it will just get the franchise back on track. As for your viewing, I would suggest you watch it at least one time, because believe it or not, this movie is doing well critically, and lots of fans seem to enjoy it, which I'm very glad of, but I'm still disappointed at the end of the day. I still love you Jack Black though, you're my hero.